How's it guys and welcome back to the channel and this time it's a guide for Anvil Toolkit. I've been getting a lot of requests to do a modding guide for Anvil Toolkit, well just a general one. And although I've done this before uh, a couple times, it's always been embedded into a specific game. And of course the people requesting me to do a modding guide might not be interested in that game so they can't find the guide. So what I've done is I've just extracted the latest Anvil Toolkit guide from Assassin's Creed Revelations and I'm uploading it here as its own specific video. This guide will help you mod any game that uses the Anvil engine, which is a number of Ubisoft titles and some others. Now the first thing that you will need is Anvil Toolkit. So if you go to your specific game and you just type in Anvil Toolkit, there should be an Anvil Toolkit mod that you can download from there. That's the app. But if you can't find it, the link is in the description below. And although it's for Assassin's Creed Revelations, it's not specific for that game. And remember, although I'm using Assassin's Creed Revelation mods, this guide will help anyone for any other Anvil game. Now, the great thing about Anvil Toolkit is that nothing needs to be installed. It runs directly off the EXE. Now, to start modding Revelations, you will need Anvil Toolkit, as I mentioned before. But before we uh, click on this, let me just explain what these Forge files are. Think of these Forge files as a zip file. And within a zip file, there are other files, right? But we can't get into this file. So what we're going to use, we're going to use Anvil Toolkit. And within a Forge file are data files. That's why you have a choice between data or Forge files in Nexus mods. But we'll get to that. First thing we need to do is double click on Anvil Toolkit. Let's just minimize all of this so it's a little bit cleaner. Two windows will pop up. The console and this one. Don't get rid, rid of this one because this thing will just tell you when things are successfully installed and uh, unpacked and so on. So the game selector screen over here for Anvil Toolkit will kind of scan your computer and see all the games that you have or, or don't have, you know. But as you can see here, it found my revelations. But sometimes it won't find your game. So let me just show you that process. I just deleted uh, revelations. So sometimes if you look, you will see, oh, my revelations is not there. So all you need to do is go to the plus sign to add a game. Let's just move this out of the way. And the preset you will use is revelations. And then where's the path? So yours might be empty since it, it didn't show up over here. And all you have to do is go to your game install folder. So for us, it is in games. You play the best game launcher ever and revelations and then click on the ACR SP, the single player .exe file. Just click once and then click open. It should come up there. This over here is just to change the icon. You see each one of them got their own icon. So you can put whatever picture that you want there to represent your game. But once you got that, you click OK. And then you should see if you scroll down. It should come up here at the bottom. Now, if you've opened up Anvil Toolkit and Revelations was there, you might have to click on this little um, pencil over here and also add where your EXE is. Since it might show up here, but it can't find the game itself or the, the path of the game. So then you just have to go through this step like I explained. Once you've done that, you click OK. And now... Everything is set up for Revelations. We'll just double click on this box. So if you double click and just watch over here, what it's going to do is it's just going to read the entire game. So it'll say here, the game file list not found. Do you want to download it now? You'll say yes. What it's doing is it's finding the game list of of your install folder. So all of these forge files and so on is just trying to read that list so we'll say yes and then you see it says game file list loaded so all this is is just a copy oh, of that folder sorry of your installation folder see there you'll see there the state okay it's not showing exactly 100% because it's uh, you'll see there, Forge, Constantinople Forge, 
uh, den defense force, den defense. So it's just showing you this. Now that we got access to the game files and the forge, we want to mod the game, right? So we'll go to our favorite mods that we want and we'll start with the Yusef mod. So whenever you want a certain mod, please, please read the description as well as the installation of the file because this will help you explain where to actually drop the files within Anvil Toolkit if you need to. And many mods will give you an option of either using the forge file or the data file. So the forge file for the Yusuf mod is this entire file itself, right? And the data file are the many files within a forge file. So if we download a data file and we go to slow download and just download it, you will see we have a data file and a forge file, right? I just downloaded both. But uh, if you're following this, you will have the data file. So within the zip, if we just double click into this, you will see a data folder. Sometimes there's a folder, it's just the way the modder wants to kind of organize these files so it's easier for you to know which files is where. So it's not the folder we're looking for, it's the files itself, the dot data. See, dot data, dot data. So these files need to go somewhere in one of these forges. So if we go to the description, he'll explain the data version, right? The data file that you downloaded. You just have to drop it inside the data PC underscore ACFE underscore Canstanople folder and compile it with Anvil, right? So let's look for this forge file. So it's this one over there, right? ACFE Constantinople dot forge. So, to look inside of this forge file, all you have to do is right click and unpack. You can also double click, it does the same thing. So we'll unpack it. You'll see they're creating a backup, decentralizing, writing files. So just wait till everything is completed. And also, I might have not mentioned this, but any of these forge files that you are going to tinker with, what you should first do is in your install folder, find that forge file and create a copy of this for backup. So copy this. Some of these files can be big. Create a new folder, call it backup. Since what's happening now is nothing big, it's just reading into the file. So, we, so we're not changing anything yet. But you'll see my drive is very slow because it's actually running on this drive at the moment. Trying to open it up. So we got our backup. We'll go into it and we'll paste that Constantinople forge file in here. So if anything goes wrong, we can just replace it with the original right back and then your game should still be fine. So do the step first before you even click into the forge file. But uh, okay, so let's just go back up and let's just wait for writing all of, of the files. Depending on the size of the forge file, some forge files are big with many files in it and it will take a long time and sometimes it'll be almost instant. And there we go. It says successfully read forge file in the console and you'll see here it changed to the data. So now we're inside of this forge file over here. Here you can see the, the path. So these are the files that we're going to kind of replace, which is why I say you create a backup. Now, if we go to the zip file that has the body, head, and use of data, you'll see it's one. The, this name is very specific. So if you look over here, we don't see anything like that. So this mod is just adding to this forge file. It's not replacing. Some mods will actually replace this entire data file with something else. And I'll explain that a little bit later when we get onto uh, the second mod but for now all we're going to do is click and drag over and remember this thing doesn't ask you if you want to replace a file or not it just replaces it so be careful but we'll just click and drag and there you see there's use of head body and this one I think yeah the U so now that we're happy with what we got all we have to do is Click up once, and then we're in this section, 
and we want to close forge file again we, we we want to recompile it since we kind of opened it up you know and decompiled the the file itself so we'll just right click and go to repack since we unpacked it in other words so we'll click on this and we'll wait for this process to end there we go successfully written to forge so if we go back up again now we're in the game's main folder and we've actually changed this so now when you see yusuf he's actually wearing his hood now if you run into any errors or the game doesn't want to actually uh, repack your file then you did do something wrong because when i first done this i forgot to let this thing kind of run like i, I was a little bit too quick so when i thought it was successfully read already so then i just didn't change anything so i just double clicked again and i kind of stopped this process which means i couldn't pack it again so then if that happens but you still want the mod then you can just replace this entire forge file not through anvil toolkit but actually let's just close this if you're just going to replace a forge file then all you need to do is go to your mods and if you chose your forge file you'll see it's a complete forge file so it's that 894 megabyte file you'll go to your assassin's creed game path and it's this file that you want to actually replace so this file that he's got here is exactly the same file as vanilla except for it includes the use of mod already in it so now you're asking yourself but well, then why don't i just take the forge file well firstly it's bigger so if you don't have a lot of internet uh, speed you know you would rather take the data files which is smaller and then put it in yourself but why not just take a forge file and then just replace it because sometimes there are other mods that also use this constantinople forge file and have their own mods that need to be placed in it so if you have multiple mods that use this forge file you will have to get the data of each of those three mods and then place each of those three mods within this forge file that's if each of those three mods have unique names for their data files if two of the mods replace the same file the same data file then you're going to have to choose which mod you actually want because you can't run both at the same time and the way i'll explain that is like this through a visual representation oh look it's a forge file let's go into it ah inside the forge file are data files now let's go to our three favorite mods for simplicity's sake all three mods have three different outfits in the forge file there is a data file named a is a data file named b and is a data file named c and each a b and c correspond to the in-game outfit which is represented here now with the mods that you've downloaded you will see the data file that it has is data file a the second mod is data file z and the third one is data file a as well and all three mods need to be placed in the forge file that we've just opened up which contains data file a b and c are you getting where i'm going with this so now we are going to replace mod one and take that data file a and place it into the forge file and actually replace the original vanilla data file a like this so now when you go in game and you select outfit a it will actually show you the modded version of outfit a since you've replaced it then we'll go to the second mod the second mod adds a file to this forge file which is data file z so now you don't have to worry about it replacing any file so you can also add it to that forge file so now you have mods 1 and mod 2 in that same forge file but mod 3 is different mod 3 re also replaces data file a so if we put that in and we go back in game you won't see mod 1's outfit anymore 
you will see mod 3's outfit. So that is where you have to make a choice because this mod both use the same file. And that's how you have to decide on certain mods. Therefore, it's important to read the description within the mod description in the first page to actually see which file it actually replaces. Sometimes it says it, sometimes it doesn't, but at least you have an understanding now of the process and how to go about deciding what mod to use and how certain mods can be used together and other mods are incompatible. Well, that's it. We've come to the end of the guide. And if this video has helped you out or cleared up a few things, then give this video a like. And if you'd like to see more videos like this, then subscribe. Thank you very much. Cheers. Bye-bye.